I don't get scared easily. When I was a kid, I got freaked out by horror movies, sure, but as I grew up, I developed an increased tolerance for scary things. At this point, not a lot really scares me anymore. When I do get jump scared by something, in the rare instance it happens, typically the most I'll do is flinch. If it really gets me, I don't scream like the stereotypical high-pitched horror scream. My voice drops an octave, and I do what I can only describe as a primal beast mode yell. Here's a stream clip to show you what I mean. My chest. I'm sure that this is a normal ch- <laughs> So all this to say, horror doesn't really affect me very much. I actually really enjoy the genre. I'm not like a crazy big horror movie nut or anything, but Jurassic Park and Jaws are two of my favorite movies, if you count those as horror, which I think they should. I've listened to the Magnus Archive several times over and adore it, and I have a genuine fascination with the type of creeping horror in things like Junji Ito's manga. I watch a lot of playthroughs of horror games, not because I think they're too scary to play myself, but because I don't have much interest in actually playing them, but still want to check out the story and the spooks that lie within. I'm still mourning the fact that Silent Hills was cancelled. It looked so good and we were robbed! <laughs> But despite my enjoyment of horror, I do have a few things that scare me, like really get down into my gut and leave me freaked out for days or even weeks on end. Some of them are actually legitimate, understandable fears, and others are, well, less so. So in the spirit of Spooky Month, let's talk about that. When it comes to horror media, I have a few things I call my big nose. Like, no matter how good the movie is, if it has one of these things, I will stop watching it and I will never go back. The big no's are teeth, nails, and eyes. Anything that involves someone's teeth, fingernails, or eyes getting messed with, I just cannot handle even a little bit. Body horror in literally any other sense? Hell yeah, I'll watch the heck out of that. But if there's a torture scene where a character gets their fingernails ripped out, I am leaving the room immediately. I remember once my dad was helping a family friend fix their truck, and in the process of trying to get the spare tire unmounted from the bottom of the truck, the tire fell on his hand, and afterwards one of his fingernails fell off. And even just typing that into my script, I got the heebie-jeebies in and I wanted to pass out a little. Also, I had a lot of long, complicated, and drawn-out medical procedures done to my mouth as a child because I had very messed up teeth, so teeth stuff just really hits way too close to home for me. You know those nightmares you have where sometimes your teeth fall out of your skull? When I get stressed out, I have those a lot, and they're especially vivid for me because that actually <laughs> happened once. I'm gonna make a whole other video about my long and complicated dental history, and that time I was taking a math test and a bunch of my teeth all fell out right in the middle of it is going to be a big part of that script. Also, for eyes? I don't know, I'm an artist. I like to keep my eyes and my head in working properly, please and thank you. I don't even wear colored contacts for cosplay because I get too nervous about damaging my vision. No thank you. I was also traumatized as a child because I happened to walk into the room when my parents were watching The Matrix, right during the scene where a dude gets like a worm or something put in his eye or his ear. Look, I've never watched the full movie because that one 10 second bit scared me so much when I was five years old, so just please leave me alone. I just know it was horrifying and I never got over it. My last big no is any kind of parasite or pregnancy horror, specifically living things in places where they should not be, specifically inside of a person. Basically, the Alien movie franchise is literally my worst nightmare. Dudes getting eaten by a big ugly alien thing? Sure, go nuts, doesn't bother me at all. Creepy crab thing latching onto your face and planting an egg inside you that bursts its way out when it's ready to hatch? Holy shit, no thank you. No matter how many times I watch those movies, I still almost throw up every time I watch that first chest burster scene. I just... It's funny because I think I can pinpoint the exact moment when this fear became lodged in my head. When I was in high school, I spent most of my lunch breaks reading in the school library. Our library had a few shelves of comics and manga, and I would usually end up reading those. And one of the manga we had was a little thing called Pet Shop of Horrors, which should not have been in my high school library, probably. That one chapter with the, uh, 
rabbits. Yeah, that messed me up for days after I read it. Gross, 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 gross. And like I said before, I actually really enjoy Junji Ito's work, but I had to skip a section of his manga Uzumaki because it touched on this exact fear. There's a part in the story where there's like evil fungus babies or something. I don't know because I skipped those chapters. Literally everything else was fine and dandy, but I just couldn't deal with that one section and had to skip over it. Also, a relevant side tangent. I remember one night in college, I came home from working in the animation building pretty late at night, and my roommate Sarah and her girlfriend were in the living room watching a horror movie. They asked if I wanted to watch it with them, and I said sure, sat down, and watched only about three minutes of it with them before I had to evacuate the living room. In the scene, there were a bunch of people with flashlights looking around some kind of big spiderweb covered room, and they came across this one guy who was webbed up to the wall. He started doing the standard horror movie, something very bad is about to happen to me freak out, and I hear Sarah very quietly whisper, Oh no, the spiders are inside him! And I immediately stood up and left the room, just in time to hear some very gross sounds and the two of them both go, "Ew." <laughs> A few years later, I tried asking them what that movie was, and both of them said they didn't remember what I was talking about and had no idea what movie I could have meant. And then, last year, almost a decade later, I'm watching random kill count videos in the background while I work, and there was that dang spider scene! It turns out the movie was The Mist, if you were curious. A film I will probably never be watching, but I'm at least glad I know I didn't imagine that whole thing, so shout out to the kill count for helping resolve that mystery. Speaking of spiders, I'm not scared of them. I don't like them being in my house, and I would prefer not to be bitten by them because I've seen pictures of what spider bites can do to people, and while they probably won't kill you, it's still pretty nasty. So I try to avoid them, and I'm cautious about, like, walking through their webs and stuff. But if I see a spider, I'm not going to go into immediate freakout mode. If it's really small, I'll probably just leave it alone, and bigger ones in my house I try to catch and release. The only time I've killed a spider in recent memory was the time a huntsman spider got into my bathroom while I was living in Japan, and the little sucker kept hiding and I couldn't catch him to throw him outside. He was trapped in my bathroom for two days before I eventually hotboxed him with bug killer spray and felt really bad about it afterwards. Poor little guy, he wasn't doing anything wrong, he was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. I mean, I probably shouldn't call him little guy because huntsman spiders can get to be as big as dinner plates and the ones I saw around my apartment in Japan were around two to three inches across, which is quite large, but still. So real spiders, not a big deal, but dream spiders, now that's another situation entirely. I've talked about my experiences with sleep paralysis and hallucinations before, and I said in my ghost stories video that after I told my sleep paralysis monster to fuck off, I never had sleep paralysis again. And this is true, but I still get the hallucinations occasionally. And instead of a dude standing by my bed, now there are giant spiders on my ceiling. The last time I remember this happening was when my brother and I had an apartment together. I was asleep in my room and he was playing video games in the living room. I remember waking up a little, rolling over, looking up, and seeing a gigantic spider on my ceiling just above my head. I screamed and ran out of my bedroom, yelling about a tarantula on the ceiling, scaring the shit out of my brother, and we both ran inside trying to find the supposed spider. We looked around for a while and didn't see anything, then googled if tarantulas can even climb on ceilings. Uh, this was inconclusive, but we figured that it was more likely I had just hallucinated the thing. Or maybe I didn't, and the giant ceiling spider is still out there somewhere we'll never know, because we moved out back in February. Anyway, I have a few other spooky things that still freak me out. I don't like the blinds being open at night because I don't like the idea of people being able to see into my house when I can't see them. And also, when I was in high school, I watched the trailer for the movie The Fourth Kind, and that dang owl from the trailer freaked me out so bad for whatever reason. At the time, we had relatives staying in my room, so I was sleeping on a cot in my brother's room, and his room had this one window to the backyard with no blinds or curtains on it, and there was a tree just outside. And I had to lay on that cot 
hiding under the blankets, terrified that the owl was sitting in the tree and I couldn't see it and it was just staring at me and would, I don't know, attack me through the window or something. I don't think I got any sleep until I was able to move back into my bedroom and I've still never watched that movie, but that dang owl still gives me the heebie-jeebies. I remember bringing this up to my friend and horror movie fan Athena once and she said that Fourth Kind was a good watch the first time but isn't as scary and is kind of silly on rewatches. Maybe I'll watch it someday, but man, screw that owl. I hate that owl. Get out of here. So far, I think all of these fears are fairly reasonable, common, and normal fears for people to have, except maybe the hallucination dream spiders, but I haven't had those in a while and I think those are stress-induced. But I also have a couple that are just very silly and hard to explain, so let's get into those. First up, birds! Yeah, you heard me, birds! And not birds in general, but the act of touching or handling birds, specifically smaller ones. You might hear this and think, haha, Star was so traumatized by the owl in that one movie, she's scared of birds now. No! Incorrect! I have no strong feelings about the concept of birds one way or the other. In fact, I think real, not haunted owls are super cute. I even got to hold one once, and I loved it. We had a family of screech owls living in the trees near my house as a kid, and I loved them too, and I gave them all names. Birds are neat. I don't want to hold them. And it's not because I'm scared of the actual animals. I'm not scared of birds. I'm not going to see a grackle in my driveway and freak out. I am scared specifically of touching birds because I am afraid of how small and fragile they are. The few times I've been able to hold a friend's pet bird, I got scared that I was going to touch them wrong and I'd hurt them somehow. Bird bones are hollow and very lightweight to make them able to fly, and every time I touch a bird, I'm worried that I'm going to pet them too hard, and all their little bird bones will break and they'll die, and I'd be a bird murderer. A birderer. When I brought up this fear on stream, people teased me a bit and brought up that birds fly into windows all the time and they're usually fine, so I shouldn't be so worried about accidentally killing a bird just by touching it wrong. And yes, that is reasonable and makes sense, but it's called an irrational fear for a reason. And yeah, that fear doesn't extend to larger birds because in my head they're sturdier, I guess. But if you ask if I want to hold your pet parakeet, I'm going to get real nervous. I'll probably say yes anyway because I like animals, but I'm going to be extremely nervous and on edge the entire time that parakeet is in my hand, and I'm going to be doing a little prayer in my head that it doesn't disintegrate in front of me. The next fear is somewhat related to that. Meat that still looks like the animal it came from. This one's less of a fear and more of a general gross factor, but like I said before, I love animals. I think they're cute. But I'm not a vegetarian because, I'm sorry, meat tastes good, and I have an iron deficiency, so I need that shit where I can get it. I don't even eat meat that often, but I enjoy steak and bacon and stuff like that. Please don't use this as an opportunity to convert me to veganism in the comments. I will block you. Anyway, I remember the first time I realized this fear was at Thanksgiving one year. We make Thanksgiving turkey every year, and that doesn't bother me. But one year we also had some sort of smaller game birds as part of the meal. I don't think they were quail, they were smaller than that, but anyway. I don't remember what they were because I was pretty young at the time, but they were so small you could basically just eat the whole thing off your plate and they still looked very bird-like. More so than the turkey, these looked like they could have been caught in the backyard outside and cooked up an hour ago. And I tried to power through it, but I couldn't bring myself to eat it. My sense of empathy kicked in and I freaked out too hard. This has only happened a handful of times in my life, and for whatever reason, it never happens with fish, but I don't know, something about food that still looks like an animal just gives me the heebie-jeebies. And lastly, the final fear is earrings. Decorative dangly earrings. For this one, I don't even have to be the one wearing them. Just the sight of someone wearing dangly earrings activates my fight or flight response just a little bit. I have pierced ears myself and I used to wear dangly earrings, but at some point this fear just eked its way into my head and now I will only wear studs. Because the more specific fear is wearing dangly earrings and having them get caught on something and ripped out of your ears and messing up your earlobes. That shit terrifies me. 
It happened to both my grandma and a friend of mine from high school. My friend had a cat paw at her earrings and it ripped them out, and I can't remember what happened to my grandma, but I think maybe they got caught on some fabric or something. But basically, once your ears get torn, you have split earlobes and you can't ever wear earrings again. I'm sure there's probably a way to fix it with like surgery or something, but ugh, your ears are so sensitive and getting them pierced is already painful enough, but having your earrings ripped out, no thank you. This fear also extends to folks who get those big gauges in their ears, the really big one where it looks like a big hole is just going through their earlobe and they dangle. On the one hand, it's your body and you can do whatever you want to it. I'm not gonna stop you. But on the other hand, I can so vividly see like, you're holding a baby and the baby just reaches up and pulls on the gauges and just rips your earlobe and no, horrible, nightmare fuel. And some of you may be thinking, Star, your little avatar slash VTuber model has dangly earrings. And to that I say, they're clip-ons, that's canon. I'll still wear dangly earrings if they're clip-ons. I just don't ever want to stick those things through my ear holes and risk them getting ripped out. No, thank you. <laughs> So, with that said and done, happy spooky month, friends. What type of stuff freaks you out the most? Drop it in the comments and let's commiserate together. Yeehaw. All right, and that just about covers it for this video. So, a couple of quick updates here at the end. Um, I mentioned in my last video that I was working on kind of a special little Halloween project, and I did manage to finish it on time, so that'll be up on Halloween. Yeehaw. However, if you are interested, you can listen to the whole thing right now because I released it super duper early for patrons. You can also vote on the topics for my next couple of videos and get this art as stickers as part of the October Mail Club by joining my Patreon, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, etc. Every month I do exclusive stickers and postcards and this video featured the sticker art for October, but it'll be gone after October's over. So if you want it, you gotta go get it quick. This art has also being featured as charms on my store for the month of October. I pretty much just add two every year at this point and I will do so until I run out of characters. So if you want those, those will be on my store until the end of October. Those are not exclusive for patrons. Anybody can grab those. So just go check that out. All those links will be down in the description. I will see you guys next time. Thanks for listening. Uh, goodbye.